Hello, Key West. This is Louis Patron bringing you the Key West Lou Legal Hour on this beautiful Friday morning in Key West. Let me say hello also to my friends. Again, I repeat this every week because they're watching in Papua, New Guinea, places like Beijing, China, Jakarta, Indonesia, Delhi, India, Navarra, Italy, Milan, Italy, uh, London, England, Paris, France, Chamonix, France, and in South America, Brazil, Argentina, and Chile, and most recently in Norway, Finland, and Malaysia. Last month, people watched this show from those three new places. Absolutely amazing. And all over the United States and Canada. This has been one big week. A lot of things have happened. And I'm going to start with something that's a little bit off to the side. Uh, and you would not expect this part of the show, but I must talk about it. Syracuse beat Indiana last night, big time, in the March Madness Tournament. Uh, this was a great victory. We, we killed them by 11 points. Indiana's the number one seed. We're the number four seed. Uh, that don't mean too much. We were not supposed to win last night. We were the underdog. No one talked about us all week. Uh, the, the, the sports columnists, whenever they wrote, they said this great Indiana team, blah, blah, boo. They didn't even mention we were, they were playing Syracuse. This morning's news reports that I read just said Syracuse won. And then it had this long dissertation on why Indiana lost. We have a great zone defense. The importance of this game beyond moving us ahead in the tournament is that it's the first time in 27 years Syracuse and Indiana have met. The last time we met was in the championship game of the Final Four in 1987 in New Orleans. I was there. Syracuse is winning by a point with seven seconds to go. An Indiana substitute by the name of Keith Smart. Everyone remembers that guy's name to today. And he was not even a star on the team. He was a sub. He was in there. He got the ball with seven seconds to go. He was 12 feet away from the basket on the side, and he was falling backwards. And he just threw the ball up, and it went in the basket, and we lost by a point. So it was good vengeance last night. And may Syracuse continue and go on? I don't know. This team is surprising me right now. All right, let's talk about Cyprus and the banks. It is a tragedy. I've been talking about this for three weeks. I've been writing about it. It is a tragedy. What has occurred and is occurring in Cyprus? It all has to do with the euro again. Seven, you know, 17 countries got together some 15 odd years ago and formed this euro nation. They were all going to bank together. No problem. We are going to take care of each other. Borrow all the money you want. Don't worry. We are one. We are no longer 17 separate entities. Well, it's all hit the fan. So many of these countries can't pay their money back that they borrowed from the bank. I'm talking about Cyprus, Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, a country called Slovenia, and several other smaller countries such as Cyprus, same size as Cyprus. So what's happened now? It's a bank. You've got to understand this. The Euro nations, the Euro bank. Most of the money in that bank has been put in there by Germany because Germany has been very successful the last 20 years in everything they have done. So it is German money in reality which is being lent out. Well, these countries can't afford to pay back what they owe to the bank. And if the bank doesn't get paid back, Germany doesn't get paid back. And if Germany doesn't get, get paid back, Germany's on the ropes economically. That's the way it is. Okay. So Germany's pressing to get their money. The Euro Bank's pressing these countries. And they pick on Little Cyprus. Little Cyprus needs a bailout of about $13.5 billion. The Euro Bank says, hey, guys, we'll help you. But you've got to come up with $7.5 million on your own. And the way you're going to do it is you're just going to go grab money out of everybody's bank accounts in your country, out of their savings accounts, their checking accounts, and so forth. Anyone that has... Under 100,000 euro, you take 3%. Over 100,000 euro, you take 9%. It's like a tax, a levy. And you take the people's money, and it'll help you to bail out to pay us. You can't do this to people. Can you imagine if someone went into an American bank and took money out of your savings account, your hard-earned money, took money out of your checking account? You can't pay your bills. You can't do anything. And the people 
we're in an uprising in Cyprus. You can't do this. So they negotiated. They closed the bank, by the way. The bank was closed for 13 days. The banks in Cyprus, they just opened yesterday. And they finally came down to this, that anyone with a deposit in excess of 100,000 euros was going to have money removed. Somewhere between 40 and 80 percent. The amount has not been determined yet. It will not be less than 40 and it will not be more than 80. Isn't that wonderful? That's a wipeout when you get up into the 80 percentage. It's a wipeout at 40 percent. Uh, and other things have been imposed on Cyprus to make them do this. The banks are closed for almost two weeks. People can't get money out. Only the ATM machines. They, I don't know why this worked, but they were able to get 500 euros a day. N new rule, only 300 euros a day. You can't cash a check. You can deposit it in your account. Uh, you, you can only use your credit card or your debit card to the extent of 5,000 euros a month. No more. People were doing it for more and paying it back. Uh, because they expect the people to commit a run on the banks, I'd go take my money out, so would you. Uh, they brought in $1.5 billion from the Euro Bank so the banks that are left can remain strong. One of the big banks in Cyprus went out of business. But in effect, the whole financial system is screwed up. Uh, there's not enough money. They took money out of people's accounts. I have never heard of this being done before except in some unique situations in the last 50, 100 years. Uh, everyone's worried. Everyone's afraid. The rest of the countries in the Euro, or Euro nation. I'm concerned for us here in the United States because bankers are whores. They have been whores for 20 to 30 years in this country. They gave us the great economic depression of 2008. They also gave us the economic depression of 1930. I mean, this is nothing new. Banks get too much power. They get too strong. They don't care about the people, about the depositors. They only care about their bottom line, their salaries, and their bonuses, and it has happened all over again. It happened in 2008 with the mortgage situation. It is continuing to this day. Now, all this, these terrible things are happening in Cyprus, and I'm saying what happened in Cyprus could happen here in the United States. Many economists have written in the last 72 hours that it could happen because it's a quick jump from Cyprus across the Atlantic to the USA. Germany, in the meantime, is sitting in the background controlling this whole thing and is pushing the, other, the Euro Bank to do all this. The Cyprus people are not stupid. They are demonstrating. They are carrying signs with Merkel's face on it. And she, Mrs. Merkel's the prime minister, and they drew a mustache on her to make her look like Hitler, okay? And the, they got her with the tash. They say she's like Hitler, and the signs say, get out of our country. In the meantime, Germany, in their papers, newspapers, are reporting that what has been accomplished in Cyprus is a total victory for Germany. Total victory for Germany. They had to bring in police and hire private security guards at all the banks yesterday because they were fearful of what was going to occur. Now, if you're doing business, you're doing business in Greece, and in Cyprus, I'm sorry, from this point forward, any contract you enter into with anybody within the country or out of the country, up to 200 200,000 euros is subject to approval if they want to, to look at the contract and say whether you can do it or not. If it's over 200,000 euro, and countries do business with big contracts, well, you need approval first. The government has to look at it, and that's the Euro Bank in effect, and say whether this deal can go through or not, whether Cyprus can afford to have you two businessmen do this kind of a deal. I said, based on my trip to Greece last summer, and I've said in writing and on the show during the course of the nine, ten months since I left Greece, don't worry about a world war, the third world war starting in, in the Middle East. If we have a third world war, it's going to start in Europe and it's going to start with Germany. Germany, who gave us World War I, World War II, will now give us World War III because of the economic situation that exists. They are being pigs. They could ease this whole thing up by saying, instead of you paying so much on this date, you pay so much less. They're giving pennies when dollars are required to be pulled back to give breathing space to these other countries. 
Germany should never have loaned this money in the first place. They didn't care. They were going to make all this money in interest. And now all of Europe is like this economically. So keep your eyes on this. It's going to, it may happen here and we could have a war because you can't take people's money. They get upset. There, there's, there are demonstrations. Then there's going to be violence. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, sorry to start on that sad note, but stay with me. We're going to station break and we'll be back shortly.